Howdy folks and welcome to part two of Grandma Gets Her Groove where today we're going to be installing a subwoofer and a sub amp so you're not going to want to miss it. So today guys what we're going to be doing is we're going to be installing a sub box with a Memphis sub and a 450 watt Kenwood mono sub amp. Let's take a look and see what it is. So as you can see we've got this Kenwood KAC819 it's a mono sub amp and we've got the Memphis DB drive uh, 10 inch subwoofer in a truck box of all things. Now this box was in Junior's Dakota when he had that he took the stereo system out when he sold it the guy wanted a too big of a discount so Junior said I'm taking the stereo with me. The optimum position that I'd like to have this would be up on this rear deck so I don't lose any space in the trunk. The problem is I've either got to make space for the spare tire or the stereo. So I'm going to sacrifice this little bit of uh, space here up against this, uh, this wall and that was, this is where the final resting place will be for this sub. Because it's in a truck box it's not going to take up a lot of room anyway. So what we've got to do is we've got to get our amp kit wired up which means we've got to go under the hood, connect to the battery, and then just start running a bunch of wires down both sides of the vehicle. So we're gonna go into detail with that. So let's get started. So we've got our amp kit and I will go over everything that's inside of that. Our battery is on the right hand side of the passenger side of the vehicle, which means we're gonna run our power leads up the passenger side of the car. As far as your signal leads, we're gonna run them up the driver's side of the car. And the reason why we're gonna do that is because we don't want the power wire interfering with any signal strength coming out of the deck that supplies signal to the amplifier. We're gonna get the power wire uh, run up the passenger side, which means we gotta start tearing apart uh, a bunch of plastic on the sill plates and whatnot. And then we'll come over to the driver's side, do the same thing for the uh, power control and the signal wire. Okay guys, so I'm not sure if you can see that or not, but there's a grommet with a bunch of wires coming out of the firewall right underneath your heater box, which is outside underneath the hood. So right there is your blower motor, and that wiring harness is right below it. And if you'll see right there, this is the under the dash side of that wiring harness coming through the firewall. And you'll note that I've got a coat hanger going out through it. And what I'm going to do is I'll attach the power lead to the other end of the coat hanger and I will pull it through the hole that I made. Okay so what we've got here is our power lead and our coat hanger and then we're going to take some black tape and we're going to wrap that on there so that it holds it in really good because we're going to be pulling it through a really small area. So one thing you might want to try and do is right where the two go together try and taper the tape down a little bit to help guide it through the, uh, the smaller area that we're going through. So I think that's on there pretty good now. So we're gonna start weaving this thing in through the firewall. And there we go. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna pull it the whole way through into the trunk and we've got all kinds of space to hide it down in this little channel. Uh, then the uh, sill plate will cover that up. You'll not even know it's ever been there. Now before we get going too far, hauling that big red power wire through those sill plates is we've also got our pecan, uh, which in other words means your power antenna or your power wire that's usually blue coming out of the back of your stereo. And what that does is as soon as you turn your stereo on, it sends power back to the amp and turns it on as well. So even though the amp has constant power, this is your switch. This is what actually turns it on, the red wire gives it all the power it needs to power that sub. So we're going to tape this on to the end of the red wire and we're going to pull it the rest of the way through and on the other end we'll plug it in to the back of the stereo. So now we've got all of our trim pieces back in place here on the passenger side. We do have our blue wire just kind of dangling because we still got to get the stereo out of the dash and we'll run that up there once we get the actual signal wire run. So we're going to go over to the other side do the same thing run this signal wire from the head unit back to the stereo and then we can start connecting things. Well in hindsight I should have gone with the 20 foot amp wiring kit because 16 just isn't enough. As you can see right here I had to splice in more lead wires 
to make it all the way here. Probably another four foot would have done it for sure. But what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna go inside, we're gonna pull the head unit and get everything plugged in back there. And then that way we can run that signal wire back, get the battery hooked up with the fuse, and we should just about have it tied up other than cleaning up some wiring. So let's go inside, get that head unit out of the dash, and I'll show you what we gotta plug in there. So this head unit basically is just pressure fit inside that little cavity. When I installed it, it was a tight fit. I just did some trimming to make sure that it was in there really good. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna use our tool heads crate, little mini pry bar, and we're just gonna kinda reach in there and give it a little slide out on each side. And that's all there is to it. And in here, this is where you see the rat's nest of wiring. And it's also where we're gonna find that blue P control or power control wire that we're gonna run, uh, connect to the one we run up here. So on the back of this particular stereo, we do have a couple of options to run with our signal wire. Now we are looking for audio out. So it's gonna be these first two plugins that are gonna match up to this wire and we'll run that back to the amp to give it the signal. But first, we've got to get it snaked up through the dash into this little cavity so that we can actually plug it in. Okay, so we've got our signal wire into the trunk and I should have known better that if I had to extend the red and blue wire, I was probably going to not have enough of the signal wire. This is as far as it goes it needs to plug in on this side of the amp. So we're gonna to have to figure something out as far as where we're actually gonna put this so that the amp wire fits or reaches. So the, un the only other alternative is to go somewhere and try and find a longer one of these. The problem is, is it's Sunday. Nothing's open on Sunday. So we're gonna see what we can do to make do. We might temporarily have to remove the spare tire to lay this box up on that shelf. I think that is our only solution for the time being. So let's get that spare tire out of there. All right, so we've got the box moved up into place. The subwoofer is flipped around. It's on this side now, and the amp is over here. As you can see, our lines are long enough now that they'll be able to plug in over here. And our power wires are definitely long enough to plug in up here. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start plugging in all the power wires and signal wires and get this thing ready to thump. All right, so getting these amps hooked up is pretty straightforward. They're all labeled. This one here says battery, which is our red wire. Ground, which is our black wire. We've got it grounded up to the, the uh, pan up here. And then P control or remote is the blue one. That's hooked up up here. And when we come over here to this side, you've got your signal in and we will be done. We'll be able to test this thing out before we put everything back together. So let's go get some speaker wire and we will hook this up as a mono amp. Well guys, before we put everything back together and start tidying up wires, we've got everything hooked up and it sounds amazing. Take a listen. guys I don't know what come over me there but anyways we're gonna get these wires cleaned up and then we are going to close out this video all right folks that's gonna do it for this video I hope you really enjoyed this and for those of you who watched my last video and saw the teaser I posted on Instagram about grandma being stolen I'm kind of sorry but not really anyways sorry about the clickbait I just uh, I was wanting to have a little bit of fun with it and we were having fun at the time that we recorded it. So I thought, well, let's just play on that a little bit further. It was a really good video. It got lots of views, and I hope you guys continue to watch my videos, even though once in a while, I may do a little bit of a clickbait. This is not clickbait. This video right here is the video of me blowing up my 2009 Kia. So if you haven't seen it yet, go take a look at it. It is well worth the watch. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. Guys, I'm going to end this video with stay focused on the windshield, not the rearview mirror. I love you guys. God bless. Let's do it again real soon.